Hi, today I'll be explaining the physics and measurements. So we start from the length, mass, and time. And we have dimension analysis and conversion of units and the significant figures. So for the length, let's say, and the mass, and then we have the mass and for the time. So the length is, it will be represented by the big L, which is the small meters. And then the mass, which is the big M, which is the unit, which is kilogram. And for the time, which is the capitalized T, which is the unit is second. And then we go on to the dimensional analysis. So we have the dimensions. So we have here the X, okay, which is the distance, or it could be called also the displacement, and it's the length, which is all the, the capitalized L. And then comes the small v, which is the speed, velocity, which is L over T, of course, capitalized. And then we have the acceleration, which is L over T squared. Now, how do we do that? So first, let's say here we have for the area. The area, we know that's M squared. So we said that the small m represents the big L or the capitalized L, which is the length. So it's going to be L squared. And for the volume, it is M cubed. So it's going to be capitalized L to the power of 3. And then we have for the time, it is the small s. So it's just T, the capitalized T. And for the mass, it's kilogram. So it's going to be the capitalized M. Now we have also other example for units, which is here feet, and here we have meter per second squared, which is the acceleration, which is over here. The unit for it is meter per second squared. And we have here, this is the area, and this is also the area. And we could also have like M cube, which, uh, or we could have feet cube, okay? Which is what, which is the volume. When it has cube, that means it's the volume, which here, these are the examples. These are volumes. And this is the time, and this is for the mass. So let's write them here. This is for the mass, this is for the time, this is for the volume, and this is for the area, because we have squared and here we have cube, and this is for acceleration. And here we have for velocity. And here we have only like, you know, for displacement, which is here. So here for displacement, for velocity, speed, acceleration, area, volume, time and mass so it's like it's just going on like that and it continues so now we have more extra a little bit not really hard questions like uh, examples I mean we have here de uh, density and we have kinetic energy and we have gravitation force let's try to do them so this is we could say this is another symbol for uh, density so density is equals to mass over volume so will be like, uh, so how is the volume going to be? So we know that the mass, uh, the unit for it is kilogram, and for the volume, it is m cube. Okay? So, so we continue. So kilogram over meter cube. So kilogram, we know that's the big M, the capitalized M over, and the small m is the capitalized L, so L cubed. So that's that's the dimensional analysis for the density. Okay, now let's move on to the kinetic energy. Now the, the formula for kinetic energy equals to half times uh, mass time, uh, times velocity squared. So, so let's find out the unit. So let's just take out the half and not include it with this. So the unit would be, so let's say, we'll consider the half later on. Because it wouldn't be not considered like for the uh, for the unit or the dimensional analysis. So we have mass and we have velocity squared. So now let's put the units. So we have the the unit is kilogram and the velocity squared, which is we know that okay. So here, so when we have let's say velocity, we know the unit for vel velocity is meter per second. But here we have squared, so there would be a squared here. That's for the velocity alone. So the two, so the two would go for the m and the s. So it's going to be like meter squared per s squared. So here it's going to be squared, and then here we have squared. So we go do the dimensional analysis. So it's going to be the capitalized m times the capitalized l squared over the capitalized t squared. So that's the dimensional analysis for the kinetic energy. And this is for the density. So now let's move for the gravitational force. So let's say we know that for the uh, gra uh, force, the unit is Newton. And we know that because it's uh, kilogram 
but we don't need to know that because that's much easier. But this one is a complicated question. So let's just move things around. Let's say we want to find for the G. So we cross multiply. So it, it would be like G M1 M2. This is the mass and this is the mass. And this is the radius. And here we have, or I could say the distance. And here this is the force. So it would be like F G R squared. We want the G, the capitalized G alone. So it would be like G equals to F G R squared over m1 m2 now let's find the units we said for the fg the fg is kilogram times the meter per second squared so let's put the s squared down with the m1 and m2 which is the m1 and m2 we said that these two are masses so you multiply them so it's going to be like kilogram squared so you'll be like kilogram squared times the s squared for the fg so here we have kilogram times the r, we have the r, which is distance, so it's going to be, okay, let's not complicate, let's, let's write it as x to not make it confusing, yeah, m, so here we have the unit for the r would be m, and the unit for the two m's over here would be kilogram squared, this is the unit. And the unit for uh, FG, which we said that it's um, uh, kilogram times meter per second squared. So now we have to cancel things around. So we we're going to cancel the 2 kg. So there would be only 1 kg left down. So it will be like M squared over kg dot squared. So now we're going to have to do the dimensional analysis. So it will be capitalized L squared and then M and then T and squared. So that's the dimensional analysis for the for the g over here so it's like look it's say not the same but over here we have the m at the top and over here we have m at the bottom so now let's move to convergence and si units so here we just said that about the si unit that for the length is meter and for the mass is kilogram and for the time is second and for the temperature is kelvin for the electric current, which is ampere, which is capitalized A, and luminous intensity, like intensity, uh, intensity, or the intensity of light, is candela, which is CD, and the amount of substance, which is mole. And we also have more and more examples that we could include. Let's say we have liter. Okay, liter, which is what, which is the volume. So we could say liter, which is the L. And there are also other more examples. Now we have the prefixes. Now to convert. Now we have the, these are the negative prefixes. Okay. So we also have the positive prefix, uh, prefixes, which are over here. And we have also more like giga and so on, 10 to the power of 12, to the power of 15, and 15, uh, and so on. So here it's like for the negative, for the positive, and here for the negative. So here we have micro. Okay, so let's start to learn how to convert. So here we have 20. So let's just put the number here alone. Okay, so here we have nano, which is 10 to the power of negative 9. So when you put it down, it's just going to be, you're going to change the sign of it. So it's going to be positive. So it's going to be 10 to the power of 9. And then here we have micro, you don't change the sign, which is 10 to the power of negative 6. So you multiply them over here. So you add them. Here we have, we add the negative 6 plus 9. So the answer would be positive 3. So the answer would be 20.0 times 10 to the power of 3. And the unit, you take the unit of this, which is nanometer. Move on to the second example. The second example, let's put the number aside. We have kilo and here. So here it will not change the sign. It's already positive, 10 to the power of 3. Even if it's not pe uh, positive, you, uh, you're you not going to flip it. So it's if it's like 10 to the power of negative 3, it's going to stay there. So over here, the signs do not change. But over here, you're going to flip the sign. Here we have 10 to the power of negative 6, so it's going to be positive 6. So you're going to multiply it here by 10 to the power of 6 equals to 0 0.19 times 10 to the power of 9, you add the powers, and then microliter. Now for the second example here we have, 
For the centi, it's 10 to the power of negative 2, and here we have the capital M, which is mega over here, 10 to the power of 6. So you flip the sign, so it's like opposite to this, so it's going to be 10 to the power of negative 6. So you multiply it over here. Okay, so you add, uh, add the powers, and we're going to have, it's going to be negative 4. And then, and here we have another example. We have three micro HG equals to uh, giga HG. So here we're going to put the number aside. Here we have micro, which is 10 to the power of negative 6. We don't flip the sign over here. But here we're going to flip the sign. It's giga, so it's going to be times 10 to the power of negative 9. So you're going to add the powers, so it's going to be times 10 power 15, negative 15, giga, Now we have more and more examples. So we have 9.8 on the other side over here. We have Gaga, which as we said that it is 10 to the power of 9. We don't change the sign. We have here we have the, uh, the capitalized T, which is 10 to the power of 12. You can write it over here. And I'm not sure of the name, maybe it's Tritra. Okay. So it is 12, but here we're going to flip the sign, so it's going to be times 10 to the power of negative 12 equals to 9.8. Now here we have another example. Put the number aside. So here we, so here we have milli which is negative 3 and then here we have kilos so is going to be times 10 to the power of negative 3 also so what you're going to do is just simply cancel the signs sorry you're not going to cancel the sign I mean it's going to be to the power of negative 6 Now here we have 4 kilo times 10 power of 3. So it's just that's the answer. Here we have 4.5 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Now here we have squared. We know that milli is negative 3, we have squared. And we have centi, centi, don't forget to flip the sign, so 10 to the power of 2. And there's also here, so 10 to the power of 2 times 2. So 4.5 times 10 to the power of negative 6 times 10, 4. So 4.5 times 10 to the power of negative 2 centimeter squared. That's the answer. Now number 4, 8.3. mega which is 6 so negative 6 equals to 8.3 times 10 to the power of negative 3 mega so that's the answer and now here we have the last example 3.1 nano which is you don't flip the sign so that's it joules and that's the answer for this. So that's it for the prefixes and conversion. 
Now let's move on for these significant figures. Now let's understand first of all which numbers could be significant and which numbers could not be significant. So let's say here we have 2000 and then we have here a decimal point. So all of those numbers will be counted as significant numbers. So here we have so here let's say the question will be like determine the number of significant figures. So here we have four significant figures. Now here we also have the same thing. We have zeros between non-zero numbers. So the whole thing is also they're all significant figures. So we have four significant figures. Here also we have the same thing. We have 2.509. They're all uh, significant figures and we have zero. So zero so here we have zero is counted as a significant figure or a number. So all of those are significant figures. And here. Now here we have only one significant figure. Only if that the zeros are after the two, it would be counted. Like for example, in this case, we, are, we have one, two, three, three significant figures. But in this case, we have only one significant figures. So here, the decimals like uh, that are right of the the zeros that are right of the decimal are not considered significant so only the number two which is a non-zero is considered significant now here but we have that the zeros are after the two or after the significant figure so they are going to be considered significant figures and for the last example here we have here we have a zero that is between non-zero uh, non numbers, so it will be considered as a significant figure. And we also have it after the non-zero number, so it will also be considered as a significant figure. So here we have one, two, three, four. Here we have four significant figures out of one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's just four significant figures. Now we have more. Now here we have uh, more detailed questions. Let, let's say we have the multiplication and division, and here we have... a. Uh, addition and subtraction. So let's start first of all with the multiplication and division. So we have 10.3 times 0 0.01345. So let's just get the answer from the cal uh, calculator and it would be 0 0.138535. So first of all what you're going to do is count the, the whole significant figures in each numbers and choose the least one. So here we have 1, 2, 3 and here we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're going to choose the one with 3 because it's the least, the least number. So you're going to be like 1, 2, and 3. And here because we have 5, okay, so the 8 would be rounded up to 9. So the answer would be 0 0.139. Now the other example, 0 0.073 times 10.0037. So if we calculate by the calculator. So the answer is 0 0.7302701. So again, let's count the significant numbers uh, on each number. So here we have 1, 2, 2 significant figures. Here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we don't need, so it's just 2. So you're going to take 1 and 2. So it's just 0 0.73 because the 0 is not going to round up the 3. So that's the answer. So now let's go to the addition and subtraction. Now addition and subtraction, it has uh, different ways of finding out the answer. So when we add 10.3 plus 0 0.01345, the answer would be 10.31345. So now let's count the significant figures that are after the decimal point. Here we count the, the whole number. So we're going to count the significant figures that are after the decimal point. Here we have one significant figure after the decimal point. While here we have 0 0.01345, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So four significant figures. We don't need that. We just only need one because we take the least number. So we're going to be like 10 point. So just one. So 10.3. That's it. And it's not going to round up because one is not going to round up three. So that's the answer. So now we have another example, 0 0.073 plus 10.0037. The answer would be 10.0767. So now let's count after this one, point one, two. So we're just going to take 2. So it's going to be like 1, 2. So the 6 is going to round up 7, so it's going to be 8. So 10.08, and that's the answer. And that's it for the... Uh, physics and measurements. Thank you.